Chapter 2. The Hunter's Moon Later that evening, the delicious smells of dinner, mashed potatoes, pork chops, and applesauce still lingered as the kids sat around the farmhouse table. Everyone had finished eating, but the conversation had been lively and interesting, and no one seemed to want to get up just yet. Mr. Murphy, at one end of the table, had taught the kids various things about living in the country, raising farm animals, and even how to properly pick apples. Noah had never known there was a wrong way to pluck an apple from a tree. You can all go out and pick some tomorrow if you like, offered Mrs. Murphy from the other end of the table. Whatever's left on the branches this time of year is ripe and in season. That sounded like a great idea, but Noah's stomach was already so full he could hardly think about apple trees. Thanks, Mrs. Murphy, he offered. We'd love to, and thank you for dinner. She nodded. Why, you're very welcome, Noah, she replied, and Noah saw Annalise grin at him across the table approvingly. Mr. Murphy glanced out the window at the evening. The sky had already gone dark. Have I ever told you about the hunter's moon, Annalise? asked Mr. Murphy. No, I don't think you have, Grandpa. Noah saw Mrs. Murphy shake her head at her husband with a distinct frown, but the old man quickly brushed her off with a look of reassurance. The kids waited for him to go on. How about the rest of you? Have you heard of a hunter's moon? I've heard of a harvest moon, said Oakley. Is it anything like that? She's a smart one, this gal, said Mr. Murphy, grinning at Oakley, and then at the rest of them. Yeah, it's a lot like that. A harvest moon is the full moon closest to the autumn equinox, so it always comes in September, and it name dates from the time before electricity, because, you see, farmers back then depended on the moon's light, so they could harvest their crops late into the night before the winter arrived. Huh? said Andre, as intrigued as the rest of them. So then... What's a hunter's moon? Well, a hunter's moon is the first full moon that appears after the harvest moon, said Mr. Murphy, wringing his hands together as he spoke. And it usually comes in October, but sometimes in November. According to folklore, it marks the beginning of the fall and of spooky season. He grinned wickedly and the girls giggled at each other. Noah couldn't help but smile, both at the story, but also because Annalise looked so pretty when she laughed. Mr. Murphy went on. People believe it was given the name because hunters, for hundreds if not thousands of years, used the additional light that such a bright moon provided to hunt at night. See, they needed to prepare for the colder months ahead, in any way they could. Interesting, said Oakley. Mr. Murphy nodded, sitting forward in his chair. You want to know what the neatest part is? They all sat, captivated by his tone. What, Grandpa? asked Annalise. Mr. Murphy grinned again. The hunter's moon usually has a bright orange hue to it. Looks like a giant jack-o'-lantern in the sky. Really? said Andre, turning to the window instinctively, but the moon was invisible from this angle. Mr. Murphy nodded. That's one reason people associate orange with spooky season, because of that bright hunter's moon in the sky. Besides all the pumpkins everywhere, of course, added Annalise with a grin. That's so cool, said Andre. How many nights does it last? asked Oakley. Sometimes three, but this year, four. Mr. Murphy scrubbed a hand across his beard and wiggled his wiry white eyebrows. Tonight's the first night. Make sure you don't miss it. Mrs. Murphy finally cut in. Well, that's enough of a history lesson, don't you think, John? She stood up and began collecting plates. What do you say we get started on these dishes, kids? The kids agreed and stood up to help. 
Several minutes passed as Andre and Noah helped clear the plates and put away the food with Mrs. Murphy. Annalise and Oakley chatted as they washed and dried dishes at the sink. Cooper lay in the corner of the floor, his eyes closed after a long, busy afternoon outdoors. Oh, goodness, it's trash night. I almost forgot, said Mrs. Murphy, looking concerned as she closed the refrigerator. The truck comes tomorrow morning. I'll take out the trash for you, offered Noah, hoping Annalise had heard him. Oh, no, I couldn't ask you to, son, the sweet older woman said. It's such a long walk in the dark, and it can be frightening out there, especially under that blood orange moon. She seemed visibly distressed. Four cans have to go to the street. That would mean two trips for you. She wiped her hands across her apron. I'll just go and get Mr. Murphy. Noah's father and mother would never let him forget it if Noah didn't insist. This was Manners 101. And besides, they were supposed to be helping with chores. He stepped in front of the door to the living room to block her gently. With all due respect, ma'am, I might be young, but I'm perfectly capable of handling it. And I'm not afraid of the dark. I'll be fine. It was his job to take out the trash cans at home every week. The hardworking man of the house had already retired to his chair in the living room in front of a warm fire in the evening news. There was no way Noah was going to let the old guy handle such a job. After a long day, when there was a strapping, able-bodied young man in the house who could do it, even if Noah was only 13. Mrs. Murphy raised her brow and looked at him. She seemed to be mulling it over. Really? I've got this, said Noah, noticing that the girls had finally turned around to listen to the exchange. Okay, well, thank you then, Noah. If you insist, Mrs. Murphy said distractedly. They're on wheels, but they'll be heavy. How about if you let Andre help you? Heavy's not a problem. I can manage it by myself, said Noah, straightening his shoulders, so that Annalise could imagine how strong he was. He didn't miss his sister's eye roll as he waited for Mrs. Murphy's reply. Mrs. Murphy only frowned again. I'm coming with you, said Andre, interrupting with a perplexed look at Noah. Where would you like us to put them, Mrs. Murphy? He asked politely. The woman finally relaxed. Thank you, Andre. I'd feel better if there were two of you. She glanced at the trash bag as Noah pulled it from the canister and tied the plastic handles together. All right. So you'll just need to take them out to where the driveway meets the main road, near the mailbox. I'm afraid it's a long way on foot, though. So be careful and stick together. She motioned to her left as they nodded. You'll find the cans on the side of the house. You can go through here, she pointed. Don't worry, Noah said with confidence as he headed for the kitchen door. We'll take care of it. Thank you, boys, and hurry back, please, said Mrs. Murphy. Oh, and you might want to grab your jackets first, she added. It's chilly this time of year. No, we'll be fine. Noah said, puffing his chest. I never get cold. He couldn't let Annalise think he was weak. It was only October, and it had been fairly warm today for the fall. Outside, Andre shivered, frowning as he walked next to Noah, in only his long-sleeved t-shirt. He'd left his jacket behind when Noah had insisted they'd be fine. Never cold, huh? You were laying it on thick in there, weren't you? What do you mean? Asked Noah, rubbing his bare arms to warm up. The evening air was, indeed, crisp and cool, and the damp smell of leaves permeated the air, only adding to the chill. Mrs. Murphy really worries a lot, doesn't she? She acted like we were little kids. I couldn't let her get Mr. Murphy to do this job. Not that, man. Andre shook his head, as if Noah's skull were as thick as a house. I agree with you about that. And she really does worry a lot. And then he turned and raised one eyebrow at Noah. What I meant was that some girls aren't impressed by show-offs. You'd stand a better chance with Annalise if you'd just chill out. When you're around her, dude. Noah's smile faded. He gave a frustrated sigh before he finally spoke. <sighs> was I that bad? Andre nodded as they made their way around the old farmhouse. 
their feet crunching through fallen orange and yellow leaves on the grass. Yeah, you were. He kept walking. Just be yourself, man. Then Andre let it go, as if the subject was closed. Wow, look at that sky, he said as they rounded the corner, and Noah looked up beyond the trees. So that's a hunter's moon. I see what Mr. Murphy was talking about now. It is spooky. Eerie gray clouds blew gently across a full moon, its orange halo glowing softly from behind a trailing mist. An owl hooted, and Noah suddenly noticed how quiet it was outside. Only the occasional chirp or squeak from the animals of the night broke the silence. And then something skittered off in the distance. He sucked in a quick breath. Raccoon? Maybe. Or maybe it was Clover? Andre glanced around anxiously. That cat was pretty friendly today. I don't think Clover would have run from us, said Noah. We'd better be glad whatever it was ran away and not toward us, said Andre. Noah grunted to agree. Dude, it's really dark in the countryside, isn't it? Even under a big old hunter's moon. Andre looked up again. Sure is, said Noah, trying to brush off the uneasiness as they reached the other side of the house. He grabbed two of the trash cans. Maybe Mrs. Murphy was right about not being out here alone. I'm glad you came with me, but let's make some noise with these things and scare off the critters, of all sizes. Both boys turned the cans around and headed down the long, flat, blacktop driveway, trailing the large, wheeled canisters as noisily as they could. About five minutes later, they reached the street and found a spot to set up the cans. That ought to do it, said Noah, and then once again, the night became eerily quiet. He took a deep breath, though, and stopped to take a quick look at the scenery. Despite the clouds, the full moon was lighting up the evening just enough so that he could make out the cornfield and across the street and the apple trees further out on the Murphy's property. It was easy to notice the leafy, tall oak trees running along the street, too. Wow, this farm is way out in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? Like, who would even hear us if we called out? Even though the festival grounds apparently weren't far off, the nearest house besides the Murphys was probably at least a mile away, maybe two. Probably no one, said Andre. Speaking of which, let's go. I'm ready to get back inside, with the lights on, extra bright. Copy that, Noah said. Just then, a faint clip-clop echoed in the darkness. What was that? He asked, looking one way and then the other. Where was it coming from? Across the fields? Or was it coming from down the street? What was what? Asked Andre, who'd already turned and taken several steps on the driveway in the direction of the house, warming his arms with his hands. Don't you hear that? Listen. Andre stopped and his eyebrows rose. Sounds like a horse, doesn't it? Yeah, and that seems weird, doesn't it? What's so weird about it? Have you looked around, Noah? Andre's tone gushed with sarcasm as he gestured to the fields and the barn in the distance. Noah's brow creased. Why would somebody be out riding this late, though? And on the street? It seemed unlikely, unless there was some sort of emergency. But then... Why would anyone handle an emergency on horseback in this day and age? Everyone around here had cars and trucks. They weren't that far from civilization. Noah listened again. Weird. Yes, it definitely sounded like someone was coming. And fast. The sharp, hollow sound of hooves on pavement grew louder. Noah turned and peered down the street, straining to see in the darkness. But with the moonlight shrouded by clouds, he couldn't make out anything clearly, try as he might. He stepped into the street, facing whatever might be there, far off though it was. Noah, someone's coming. I can hear it now, said Andre. Get out of the street, dude. Noah would move when he saw it, which he didn't. But it's so weird. There's nothing there. He gestured, even as the steady beat of the hooves grew louder. But if he couldn't see anything, then he had plenty of time, surely. Then suddenly, an enormous, dark horse raced into view, straight toward Noah, 
galloping at full speed. He could finally see the man atop the black steed too, gripping the reins but making no attempt to slow or redirect his mount from Noah's path. What was this guy doing? Didn't he see Noah? Maybe it was too dark for the rider to notice him. He could make out the whites of the powerful animal's eyes glowing almost orange in the darkness now, its nostrils flaring as it blew puffs of air from its nose. A mysterious mist seemed to envelop the pair, too, making the rider almost indistinguishable as, as anything but a vision atop a dark shadow on four legs. Noah stared, bewildered. Which way should he move to avoid getting hit? Further out into the street or back toward the shoulder? There was no time left. Noah's muscles went numb. His eyes went wide, fixating on the beast. Noah! He heard his name just as he felt Andre dive headlong into his chest, knocking him to the ground at full force. Then he blinked. As a split second later, the horse and rider raced by at top speed. Dude, what were you doing? Andre hollered, climbing off of him and standing up. You could have been killed. Noah's heart pounded in the quiet moonlit night, and his breathing came out fast. He sat up and glanced in the direction the horse had taken, still able to make out the fast and steady clip-clopping sound. He turned and stared at his friend, unable to put two words together. Uh... Are you okay? I hit you pretty hard. Andre stared back at him, but his expression finally softened. Sorry, Noah, but I had to do something. Noah blinked. Yeah. He reached around and touched his scalp where he had hit the pavement. He checked his fingers. No blood. Thank goodness. He hadn't hit his head very hard. Years of sports had taught him how to fall. I'm okay, I think. He reached up and took the hand that Andre offered, then pulled himself to his feet. Thanks, dude. I... It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I saved your life, you numbskull. What were you thinking standing there, waiting for that horse to hit you anyway? Noah cleared his throat and straightened his shoulders, brushing the gravel from the palms of his hands. I don't know. I just... I wasn't thinking. I don't know what came over me. Andre gave an exasperated nod then turned and looked down the road in the direction the horse and rider had gone. Come on, let's go, he said. He's gone. Noah followed, and they made their way back to the driveway and began the long trek back to the house. Why wouldn't he have stopped? It just seems so random and weird, said Andre a minute or two later. Like, was he some crazy assassin on horseback? He shook his head. What was up with that dude? Noah wanted to know, too. It was very odd. Right, like, was he going on some sort of wild joyride? Playing chicken to see if I'd get out of the way or what? Why wouldn't he have changed directions when he saw me there? Noah rubbed his temple. I mean, I know I shouldn't have been there, but still, it was like the guy didn't even care if he killed me. Honestly, he probably just didn't see you is all. Just like we didn't see him till the last minute. Andre frowned again. Which, by the way, was pretty weird too, wasn't it? They exchanged a confused glance. I don't know, said Noah, finding a bruise on his elbow. Make that both elbows. Do you think the Murphys will know who that was? Andre pushed his hands into the front pockets of his jeans. Noah had already thought two steps ahead on that subject. Doesn't matter, Dre, because we can't tell them. Andre looked at him like he'd lost his mind. Why not? They've got some crazed guy on a horse blowing through their neighborhood. Don't you think they'd want to know? Heck, they might already know about him. They might want to report it or something. First of all, this isn't technically a neighborhood. It's the countryside. Second, if we tell them, then they'll probably feel obligated to tell my parents that I was standing like an idiot in the middle of the road like that. And then... I'll be in even more trouble than I'm already in. I need a clean record this weekend, Andre. A very clean record, remember? Andre frowned, thinking it over. What about Oakley? Can we tell her? Noah shrugged. No, because she might use it against me sometime when she wants something that mom and dad don't. Yes, the two of them got along well, 
But even Oakley had a darker side, and his sister was smarter than Noah. He had to watch what he told her sometimes. Okay, fine. Then what about the beautiful Annalise? An exaggerated grin lit up Andre's face, breaking the tension. Noah let a smile escape him. What about her? he asked, trying to play it off. Andre let out a long sigh and dropped the grin. Come on, Noah. Know what I'm talking about? He knew, of course, but he shook his head. Leave her out of this. The next morning, Noah sat up in his bed, startled. He ran his fingers over his eyelids. Whoa. Was that what I think it was? cook a doodle doo The rooster crowed again. Man, that bird's got some pipes, said Andre from under the covers across the room. He sat up in the bed and rubbed his eyes. The girls were down the hall sharing another bedroom on the second floor as well. So, are we supposed to just jump up and start our chores when our boy out there sounds his alarm or what? asked Andre with a yawn. Noah glanced around the bedroom at the clock. Two minutes past seven. He turned to face the window. The sun hadn't quite risen yet, but daylight was almost here. I think so. Mr. Murphy said most of the work has to be done in the morning. Then we'd have the rest of the day to do what we wanted, right? He climbed out of bed and felt a shiver in the frosty morning air. But he had plenty of energy. He'd slept like a rock. Might as well get at it, eh? No time like the present, Andre said dryly, pulling off his blankets. Last night, after the boys had returned from taking out the trash, the four of them had played a few rounds of cards with Mr. and Mrs. Murphy. It had actually been fun. They knew their card games. She taught them how to trick their opponents, and he taught them how to keep a straight face so no one could guess their hands. Then, they'd watched a movie on television taken their showers, and headed off to bed. He and Andre pulled on clean clothes, ran combs through their messy hair, and brushed their teeth in the bathroom down the hall. Noah's elbows were still scraped up, but his head felt fine today. Oh, hey, said Annalise offhandedly as Noah wound up face-to-face -face with her at the top of the staircase. Good morning. Noah blushed because, once again, she looked lovely this time in a pair of blue jeans and a red and blue sweatshirt appropriate for the chilly morning weather. He could hardly keep himself from staring, but he remembered Andre's words last night. Chill out. Morning, he said casually, motioning to the stairs. After you. Thank you. She smiled brightly and skipped down ahead of him. 